to you by our friends at Blimpy. We take our first look at the Western Division leading Oakland Athletics from the American League tonight. Game one of a three-game series, three night games in a row this weekend in Atlanta. Their Toyota starting nine features Coco Crisp leading off and playing center field. Those are his lifetime numbers against the Braves. Johnny Gomes kills left-handed pitching. He's their left fielder. Donaldson, Norris, Fryman at first. Alberto Cayaspo is their second baseman. Josh Reddick is a kid out of Savannah, Georgia. He's their right fielder with Andy Perino up from AAA. Jason Hamill's the pitcher, and they will face off with Braves lefty Alex Wood. Yeah, this is a game that he pitched not too long ago. Actually, his last start, 12 Ks. I think it's the biggest game he's pitched so far. And if the Braves are going to stay in it, they need another performance much like that. For Alex, who makes his 17th start of the year, 8-9 and nine on the year, 3.08 ERA, his Ford keys to pitching success tonight. Go, go, Coco. Coco Crisp at the top of the order. As he goes, the A's go. He's got to keep him under control tonight. And grab the wheel again. Just when it looks like the, the Braves are kind of running off the road here and falling in the race, he grabbed the wheel against the Nationals and pitched to Jim. He needs to grab that wheel and get him back on track again. So it's an Oakland ball club that looks dramatically different after they made the big trade with the Red Sox. It has improved Oakland's pitching staff, but their offense is fluttering just a bit. And that includes Coco Crisp, who has five hits in his last 35 at-bats. That's Bob Melvin, the Oakland skipper. His A's have won 73 and lost 48, and have lost four of their last five. It gets a little worse in the last 30 days. He's only hitting 129, so... The A's, like every club, even though they got the best record, they go through stretches where the offense is not clicking. Round ball left side. Chris Johnson's got that, and we're underway. Good Coco start. Crisp is out number one. Here's Johnny Gomes. Gomes came over from Boston with John Lester in the trade that sent Yuenis Cespedes to Boston. And I think that was no surprise. I mean, he had been such an influential part uh, of their winning success a few years ago. They, they wanted him back in their clubhouse. And something that Oakland does as well as anyone in the big leagues is platoon their team. This is not a club that has a set everyday lineup. They have a ton of interchangeable parts, and that's certainly the case in left field. Gomes hits against lefties. And a whole host of guys playing in left against the righties. And a strike to Johnny Gomes. Does that seem to fit with their philosophy, though? I mean, when whoever it was that said that the land of misfit toys. Yeah. I mean, they've just got all these interchangeable parts you mentioned. And use them when they need them. But I think prototypically... A lot of teams would do that if it worked. It's hard to make that work. The A's have made it work with their financial restraints and their salary structure. They've made it work. Platooning is not the perfect scenario for managers. But for the A's, it's been unreal. I think of them and the Rays as the two organizations that do the most with the least. And I'm just talking about financially, the whereabouts that they have to spend their money. Yeah, they've had to be creative for... A long, long time out west in Oakland as Gomes took a strike to fill up the count. That's why their success has been great, but this is the first year that they've said we're going all in. We're making a blockbuster trade or two, and we are going to try to get to that elusive trophy. And Gomes draws a one-out walk. Your case in point about payroll, it's worth mentioning. The L.A. Dodgers payroll is about $241 million, the biggest payroll in baseball. Oakland has the best record in baseball. Their opening day payroll, $77 million. It's incredible. So Gomes aboard. Here is Josh Donaldson. Donaldson was a former Cub. He was a catching prospect. He can still catch from time to time, but he's moved over to third base. And he's a 25 home run man this year. Oakland traded Rich Harden to Chicago for Josh Donaldson. Donaldson's made himself into a, an all-star. He's also knocked in 84 men. Oh, he 
He's an aggressive hitter that looks to drive the ball as you can see him swinging at that changeup. August he's been pretty hot. Hitting over 300. And then you see the numbers against the lefties 13 home runs. He has extremely. Good power. I mean raw power that he can. Utilize. He's two away from the top spot in RBIs in the American League. Abreu with the White Sox, Miguel Cabrera with 86, Mike Trout and David Ortiz have 85 runs batted in. And that missed inside says Laz Diaz. He's tonight's home plate umpire. Pretty good pitch. That's Derek Norris. He's on deck. That's off the plate. This is what Oakland does exceptionally well. You know all about money ball and on base percentage and the like. The Oakland A's are number one in most walks earned offensively in the American League. They average almost four walks per game. And they've got two here in the opening frame. That's why they're number one in the major leagues in runs scored. They've got guys on base all the time. They're second lowest in strikeouts. We know it's the American League, but 141 more runs. Than the Braves. And 168 more than their collective opponents. That's almost twice as many runs as far as the differential is concerned of any team in the American League. And we talked about in the open, they're struggling offensively. They ran into the Royals. They scored 11 runs one game, but couldn't muster up enough runs in that series. So they have come in here, maybe. In the perfect timing for the Braves, as far as the team that uh, has lost a few out of the last five. Pickoff play, and Lastella. And the base runner got to the bag at the same time, and Tommy shaking up. Looked like the ball beat the base runner. Gomes back to the bag. Don't know if Lastella dropped it or not. Athletic well, trainer Jim Lovell out to check on the Braves second baseman. Well, if nothing else, it's going to give him a chance to look at the replay and see if there's worth a challenge or not, you know, to make sure he's healthy as the trainer goes out there. But quick move and look like he got him. Yeah. And here comes Freddie. Lastella was shaking his glove toward the uh, umpire and the dugout. I don't know if he's shaking his glove just to show that he he held on to the baseball or he's trying to get Freddie's attention. I'm breaking a rule from. Uh, you guys know Hal Galima. But I break a lot of rules in the broadcast booth never. Talk about a statistic unless you're sure. Yeah. I think the Braves have the best success rate in replays. I think they haven't been frivolous about it. They usually. Are very analytical and very careful about it. I don't know how he was safe. Yeah, he's out. Great coverage there by Listella and you know what's interesting. Work. What's interesting about this play is the whole thing that ended up talking about replay becoming part of the system. If you guys remember, it was in a playoff game in New York with Robinson Cano going back to second, and it was really obvious. That he was out and they called him safe and remember Joe Torrey having to address the situation and it really I think was a pivotal point to try to get to this point in baseball where we have all the angles and technology to get this right. The only thing I'd like to see and I think we will see this in the future is let the managers make quicker decisions give them one more flag. You know one more challenge. I thought this was the best angle right here. Glove on him, hands not there yet. The call on the field was safe, so to overturn the call, there has to be clear and convincing evidence to suggest otherwise. So we've seen all the angles we can provide. We think Gomes was picked off. If he is out, he'll be the second of the inning. If not, there'll be two on with one out, and Derek Norris will 
continue to hit. Now, the only thing you couldn't see is the gloves underneath the chest, so you don't know at which point it makes contact. So there would have to be a, there would have to be some kind of a, well, we think the glove is touching the jersey, and they get it. Johnny Gomes had already walked to third base. He kind of knew. So the Braves challenge and win. The call is overturned. Gomes picked off at second base. And now Donaldson stands at first base with one with two outs and Derek Norris is the hitter. 24 challenges by the Braves. 19 of those 24 challenges have been overturned. Only five of the 24 have been upheld. So you're right Joe. Braves have done very good work. That would be my that would be me chip. So you're right John. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> one ball. Well Joe handed me the note. You didn't even offer it the piece of paper. Here's the pitch. <laughs> oh, but did you notice he was trying to grab it out of my hand. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> Two balls at a strike to Norris. You mentioned the struggles of some of the Oakland A's that certainly applies to Norris no hits in his last 15 at bats. They're drawing a little heat out west after the offense has gone quiet following the trade and trading their cleanup hitter Cespedes to Boston. But I still think it was a great trade as John said they're all in they're going for it right now they didn't. They don't need offense. They just need to add to their pitching. And hold down everybody else's offense. And you know. We keep talking about it. We will with Oakland finances play a part. Cespedes's value was never higher. He's got another year on his contract and then he's a free agent. Remember he signed a major league contract when he came over from Cuba. Ground ball deep short and Gosselin can't get there. Norris bangs a single through the left side with two outs. Donaldson stops at second base. And the inning continues for Alex Wood. And the pickoff turns out to be very big. Well, I'm going to do my part. You know, I don't have many games left in the broadcast booth. I know the ice challenge has been thrown around. I'm going to do my part. I'm not going to cut my hair until the Braves win two in a row. See if we can't get that going. That'll be fun. I mean, it, it's growing. I know you guys are, you know, it, it has chances to, to move in directions that you may not see now, but I think that's a it's my part, you know. Here's Nate Fryman. He takes a strike. Well, thankfully, I think the Braves will win the first two games of this series, and we won't have to see you try to make a part. <laughs> <laughs> Fryman came to Oakland off waivers from San Diego. He hit 284 at Triple A this year. And a little tapper back to the mound. Alex Woods got that. And that will take care of the A's in the first inning. No runs, a hit. Two Oakland A's are left. Pickoff play loomed large. And we're underway in Atlanta. No score heading to the bottom of the first inning.
evening. No score in Atlanta. Here come the Braves at 61 and 60 on the year and looking for their fifth victory against an American League club. That club being Oakland tonight. Here's the Toyota starting lineup. Hayward, Phil Gosselin, first and second for the Braves. Standard alignment through the middle of the order. B.J. Upton is hitting eighth and in center field. He's had good luck in his career against the Oakland A's, and good luck is something Atlanta hopes to have against tonight's Oakland starter, Jason yeah. Hamill. Yeah, you see the first four games weren't so good for Oakland. The last two are a little bit better, and if he's going to be on, it's this curveball that is going to be success. He's a fastball pitcher up in the zone. And Jason Hamill's Ford keys to success tonight, joining the in crowd, and that's that roster of really good starting pitchers as John just said 1 and 0 with an 075 in his last two starts and FF that's Freddie Freeman who is 4 for 5 against him in his career with a homer. Jason Hayward back in the leadoff spot for the Braves batting 269. And he looks at a breaking ball low even count. We've talked a lot about John Lester coming over from Boston. Well, Oakland struck early. They acquired not one but two pitchers from the Chicago Cubs. Jason Hamill was one, Jeff Samarja was the other, and they paid a very heavy price. Dan Straley, minor leaguers Addison Russell and Billy McKinney, and a player to be named later on July 5th. And Billy Bean was not afraid to trade a couple of his top prospects for, as John said, a chance to win the whole shooting match this year. Yeah, they've always prided themselves on trading guys at the right time, uh, whether it be salary driven or injuries that may be coming their way. And the other thing that they haven't been able to do is have a staff where there hasn't been too many pitchers with innings limits. So now their staff is really unrestricted. They can all go deep in the game and they've got a balance and a and a staff they can really count on. Ground ball slowly out towards second. Caspo makes the play to take care of Jason Hayward and the bottom of the first inning is underway. Phil Gosselin's the Braves hitter and shortstop tonight. Nothing wrong with Andrelton Simmons ankle as you heard Tom Hart. Brian Jordan and Jerome Jurinovich report on Braves live. It's a tooth problem an abscess for Andrelton Simmons. He spent most of the day in the dentist's chair. Not even sure if he's on the dugout bench at this point in time tonight. So Gosselin gets the run at short. We'll see how he fares against Mr. Hamill. First pitch swing, ground ball to short. And Gosselin's retired for out number two. Oakland is banged up. Jed Lowry's their number one shortstop. Andy Perino just up from AAA. Lowry went to the DL with a broken finger. So he'll miss a couple of weeks. Yeah, and it was on a ground ball that bounced up and hit him on the end of his index finger. So here's FF, as Joe calls Freddie Freeman. He's starting to swing it. 12 for 25 on the homestand. They immediately put a shift on for him. Freddie immediately tries to beat it. This guy's one to the left side out of play 0 and 2. Now, Jason Hamill came in here with not too many impressive statistics for Oakland, although his last two games are they're much happier with that. But on the road, 0 and 3 with a 7 8 0. At night, 1 and 3 with a 4 9 1. But August has been much kinder to her, him and the A's, 1 and 0. 075. Popped up. And that should be no trouble for the Oakland infield. Freeman will be retired, and so is Atlanta in order in the bottom of the first inning. We go to the second. Nothing, nothing at Turner Field.
place teams this week. It's the best team in baseball, the A's. Freddie Freeman knows the team's six games out in the East, three games back in the wild card. Time is now, and the onus is on the offense. We're over six games back in the Nationals, I think. I don't know how far back in the, in the wild card, but everybody wants to say you can't like panic and panic, but yeah, the time is now. we got to go. we we got to start scoring some runs. Our pitching has been awesome all year. It's, it, we got to take it as an offense to, to get going here. And, and guys, i got to be honest, that's a change in message that I've heard from the team over the last week or so where they kept saying, what's four games? What's five games? We've got plenty of games left. Nope, we're a little too far down the track to be saying that, Tom, and the station's arriving quickly. Braves have scored four runs or less in 14 of their last 15 games, and they've lost 12 of those. I really appreciate his honesty because he's exactly right. The time is now. Alberto Cayaspo leads off for Oakland. He softly grounds toward short. Gosselin's got it. And there's number one. Well, and besides the unenviable position of being six games back, they find themselves in the crosshairs of you almost got a root for Washington. They're playing Pittsburgh. It's a team ahead of you, and you're closer to Pittsburgh than you are to Washington. So if you're thinking about chasing a team that is in front of you, you'd rather have Washington, weirdly enough, win and sweep the series, and you sweep the series, and you're tied with the team you're going to play on Monday. And you've got six games with Washington head-to-head -head still. But the bottom line is you got to win. I but like the know. idea of just winning. Yeah. And if Washington's playing Pittsburgh, one of those teams will lose, and you'll gain ground on somebody. This is Josh Reddick. He's out of Guyton, Georgia, which is down near Savannah. So, you know, he's wearing out the pass list tonight. He's wearing out pitchers right now, too. It's been hot. And that stayed up and in. Two balls and a strike. Two of their hottest hitters are not in the lineup tonight. Stephen Vogt. Brandon Moss. Left handed hitters. Gad has smothered that full count. Braves don't put on a lot of shifts, shifts, but they've got one on here for Reddick. He's hit 325 over the last couple of weeks with a lot of extra base hits. Eight doubles, four homers in that stretch. And he hit that ball before it hit him. So Reddick's still alive. We have a full count. I've no I know I've said this till I'm blue in the face, but these shifts and these hitters, I've seen a couple lately. Jams them inside. He won't do it now, three and two count, but I know he knows how to bunt. <laughs> and that's just a base hit. I mean, an easy base hit. Giving it to you. The shift will only change when the hitters change. Back toward the press box, foul by Reddick. Still a full count. Oakland's first in runs in the American League despite being 10th in average. They don't strike out. They walk a lot. Yeah, it's easy to see the separation between the two clubs when you talk about wins between Oakland and Atlanta. Pitching, they're pretty much similar. Uh -huh. I mean, every month the ERA has been similar except for August. Braves have uh, been at 4-2-5 here in August. But everything else, uh, pitching-wise, pretty close. Their offense disparity is pretty pretty big. Well, I liked what Freddie said in that sound bite about the pitching too, about how the pitching's been outstanding all year. Everyone recognizes that. Everyone recognizes where the issue lies, and that is runs scored. Popped up. Reddick is retired by Chris Johnson and two out and that may be Joe the, the biggest difference between these clubs we mentioned Oakland has outscored its opponents by 168 runs the Braves 
have been outscored by their opponents by four. Yeah, minus number. So 172 run difference over 120 some odd games. Yeah. That's enormous. So here's Andy Perino. He's the shortstop with Jed Lowry hurt. This is his third stint with the big club. You just said, though, Chip, that. Uh, oh, wait. Did you say that or John? I forgot. Go ahead. Uh, I don't want to get yelled at. <laughs> <laughs> that they're 10th in the league in hitting? 10th in average, yeah. yeah Chip said so, that. Yep. Chip, okay. Yes. <laughs> I'm, um, the one, I'm the one with the hair over here. Um, <laughs> you did get a cut. Therein lies the difference also about how they get on base and get guys around to score. Tenth and average, that's nothing to jump up and down about. But they walk so much, they do the little things to get guys around. I was surprised to see that they're sixth in home runs because they've only got one guy in the lineup tonight in double figures, and that's Donaldson. I, make, I beg your pardon. Norris has ten. So two guys. I can't remember how many Cespit has had at the time of his 17. Trade. So that factors that, into the that total. That factors in, yes. And they got a bunch of guys with seven, eight, and nine. Bouncer toward third, just foul by Perino. I just love the description that was given to us, and I think it was Ron Darling of the Mets who, who said, this is the team of the island of misfit toys. Parts and pieces that didn't fit somewhere else have gelled perfectly with Oakland. The big question is, though, will this style of baseball work in postseason? Can they get past the Tigers? Can they get into the World Series? And can they win the World Series? Because that's the frustrating thing for in the last couple of years. It may not be a fair record to assess right now. They're two and five on the year against Detroit, but I don't know if they've played them since they've made these moves. But they have played Kansas City, and they just got beat three out of four by Kansas City, and they are two and five against the Royals on the year. PNC Bank pitch tracks. Looked like it broke around the plate, but the graph says it didn't. Well, and the other thing is they've lost four times in the last two years to Justin Verland. Fair or not, it's kind of like the Astros when we had our run. Right. You know, we had their number for a little, a little while. But I think the move really shocked everybody because they were the first to pull the trigger on a big trade. And that was the one that brought Hamill and Samarja over. But then Lester was something you just you just don't see because they're not going to sign Lester, right? So it's a month and a half trade. Gosselin at short makes the play. Well, if the price to get Lester means they have a chance to win the World Series, you know it'll be worth it in Oakland. No score. AT&T Uverse, Ford, 
Delta Airlines, and Synovus, the bank of here. Back at Turner Field, good ball game underway. We are scoreless heading to the home second. We hope you'll join us for game two of the series here tomorrow night. We'll celebrate the 100th anniversary of the 1914 Miracle Braves, who won the World Series that year. Last place on the 4th of July. They won it all in 1914. The Braves are turning back the clock. Players will wear throwback uniforms, 25-cent popcorn, peanuts, and Cracker Jack specials. Dollar hot dogs, too, John. The game will remain, remind fans of old-time baseball. How many teams are in that league? 1914, probably eight. eight yeah, eight in each league. It's a pretty uh, impressive comeback. Hence the miracle, I guess. That World Series was historic. It was the first four-game sweep in World Series history. As Upton cranks one deep toward left. That baby's going to go. Justin Upton's 22nd homer, and the Braves strike first. Could have hung some clothes on that liner. Boy, great swing. Stayed back. Let his hands work. That was lovely. I don't know about you guys, but my heart was in my throat when he had to come out of the game yesterday. As a shot by Chris Johnson is speared by Kiaspo for the first down of the inning. Justin had to leave with a, an upper leg problem yesterday. He said he's good to go tonight, and boy, he showed it with that swing. Ty Kent keeps his hands inside the baseball there, let his hips work. 400-foot line drive. You know, there's certain matchups, certain pitcher style that works for some hitters and some teams. One thing with Hamilton. When he's not going well, the ball is up. It's a high fastball, curveball scenario, like you just saw right there. He bounced it. Some teams are better low ball hitters. This would probably be one of them, the Braves. That's now Gaddis unloads. That one's not coming back. His first homer since July 27th here at home against San Diego and a no doubter. He knew the pitcher knew the catcher knew. Coco Chris just wanted to see where he was going to land. Well before his injury he was certainly locked in and swinging the bat awfully well. I know since coming back it's been a struggle for him and timing and everything that goes into trying to regain that form but that has to feel awesome. Luckily, I know that feeling. Yeah, you do. It is. It's an awesome feeling. Well, I'm sure Evan feels good that he hit one off a real pitcher. His previous home run came against a former outfielder, Jason Lane. All right. <laughs> now, Lestella shoots one towards second. Diaspo gave ground, made the play, two out. Sitting, got a little home run, four to three, home run, four to three. Maybe a home run again. fouled out of play. I was talking with Greg Walker and Scott Fletcher about BJ before the game. He's in a rut again. Three for his last 19. A lot of strikeouts. Something that Greg and Scott were working on BJ before the game was aggressiveness. They want him to swing the bat. A lot of his strikeouts have been called. And they have felt that some of those calls were too close to take. 
You may go down, but if you're going to go down, go down swinging, not looking. And they felt he had an excellent session in the cage before the game. Obviously, they're hoping it carries over tonight. A shot. Just oh. foul. That was hit so hard, it's hard to tell the ball from the line. Well, that's that down and in. He hung the, hung the curve ball. Heron threw a split that came that down and in that he hit for a home run. Right. Problem is you got to have more than that one area to be able to feel good about as a hitter. If it's condensed down to one area, certainly those pitches that are close that may be away you're taking because you're looking in one area. The book's easy when the whole scouting and everything that we have, they'll know what each hitter can and can't do. It's it's based on the pitcher being able to execute the scouting report. Unfortunately, right now for BJ, there's too many windows to go to. There's too many places. You look at the strike zone and that hot quadrant for him is pretty much only down and in. And Upton's down on strikes, but for the fourth time this season, Hamill's given up a multi-homer game to an opponent. Justin Upton let off the second with a shot to left. Evan Gaddis with one out, follow with a bomb to left center. After two, Alex Wood and the Braves lead Oakland. It's a two-nothing game. Field. Good start for Alex Wood. Let's see what he has in store for us here in the third inning. It's time for our AT&T U-verse trivia question. And the question tonight is, who was the winning pitcher in the last Braves win over the Athletics? Haven't seen him since 2008, I believe. Hmm. How about Tim Hudson? And your last year was 2010, 2008, with the Braves. No. Wait. Oh, that's right. Yeah. You went out with some stragglers. I uh, went on the operating table after May or somewhere around there. Did you win? Or did we play Oakland by the time? Oh, I don't think surgery? we played Oakland by the time I. Uh, Back then, in early play, all took place during two weeks in June. Yeah. Yeah. So you might have just missed Oakland that year. Yep. I would think. Here's Jason Hamill. Big advantage for the National League clubs in interleague play. And that advantage is the AL teams can't use their designated hitter and their pitchers are forced to hit. Hamill, however, began the year in Chicago, so he's amassed 36 at bats this season. And he's got five hits, three RBIs, and has struck out 14 times. 
And that brings up the discussion of what will be the first major thing that the new commissioner tackles as the future of baseball unveils. Fly ball to center, playable for BJ. One man down. Rob Manfred, the new commissioner elect of Major League Baseball. He won't take over for Bud Selig until January. But uh, several votes took place yesterday. He got 20, then 22, then finally a team switched its vote, got to 23, and then the ceremonial vote made it a unanimous 30 to nothing. Yeah, apparently there was a write in. Yeah, candidate. that was causing confusion, too. It was uh, kind of threw everything in disarray. It took them six votes after careful consideration for the write in vote. Well, you two guys were former players. What would you like to see the new commissioner tackle first? Well, selfishly, it would be, you know, the all-star game, but I don't know if that's that's going to happen. I mean, get it back to where it was and take away the seventh game advantage. Chris bounces to third. Chris Johnson at the bag. Easy play, two out. Coco is 0 for 2 and 5 for his last 37. I'm with you, John, and it's funny how almost every person you ask about that all-star game having so much weight, everybody wants that changed. I haven't heard one person that said they like it the way it is. The other thing that eventually is going to come up, and it's going to take more and more heat from teams that construct their teams in a way where the DH or the pitcher hitting. I think that's going to be something we need to move towards a universal rule just based on how you structure your team and so much now is played interleague that it affects an American League team in a way where the traditional DH that may not play another position. It's going to be hard for the union to vote to eliminate in my opinion a position. Yeah I don't see that happening. So I would think we're getting closer and closer to the DH universally. I think the current commissioner was a staunch advocate of different rules for the two different leagues. I don't know if Mr. Manfred will feel that way. And I don't know the. Oh, mercy. I think the one thing that our, our game in the future is is at risk at. PNC pitch tracks first right there. Come on, Laz. Yeah, I think his way was caught. But I think the one thing that uh, in this time and age where we've got such instant access to so much. I think the time of game is going to have to be something that they they look at make sure that our game can can move along. In as crisp fashion as possible. Gomes walks again. He should have been struck out. The inning continues for Alex. Now we had this discussion yesterday with Tommy. Wasn't so much time of game, but pace of game. Yeah, and that's a difference. Yeah, there is a big difference. And, you know, I mean, there's there's ways that you can do it. A strategy of the game has moved to where that may be almost impossible if they continue to copycat the way that nine and ten pitchers are being used per game, and the starters get less and less of a role. But there's ways you can do it. Donaldson takes way outside. He's their big home run hitter. That's what makes that two out walk so frightening. This man's got 25 bombs. Donaldson is out of Auburn. And he hits one a mile high toward left. And that's playable for Justin Upton. He's there. And the inning is over. Oakland's earned three walks. They have one hit. They've stranded a couple of men and they trail to zip.
photo using hashtag South Fan Photo for a chance to have it shown in an upcoming broadcast. Brought to you by AT&T. That hashtag is very important. I have a feeling we're going to get some very interesting photos on Zombie Night tonight. Pretty good artistic. I'm sure the Oakland A's came to town thinking, hey, what in the heck happened? A Raider game broke out. <laughs> a strike to Alex. And the count even a ball and a strike. I know Oakland has been, uh, they've been going back and forth about his new stadium and so many different things that they're trying to get. I also believe why this is such an important run for them to maybe it could be part of that to get a new stadium. I mean, they got an atmosphere that's not quite, when it's filled, it's unbelievable. Like the playoffs last year and the Oakland Crazies or whatever they call it, mm -hmm. but they just don't have it on a nightly basis, I don't think. And they probably do a new stadium if they could keep that franchise there. Well, I think that's one of Bud Selig's great legacies, with the exception of Dodger Stadium, Fenway Park, Wrigley Field, Rogers Center. New ballparks all over Major League Baseball during his tenure as acting and full time commissioner. But two cities have been left holding the bag Oakland and Tampa Bay. Two thriving franchises, but in very difficult stadium circumstances. Very difficult, too. And if you haven't been there, especially in Tampa Bay, it's something that they were supposed to get. You know, that stadium was how many years old before they moved into it? Wood takes call third strike and is out number one. Well, they built that thing in a hurry because they thought the Giants were coming. Correct. Breaking ball. And you're right, John. Maybe didn't get the call on that breaking ball last inning, Alex Wood, because of the way it was caught by Evan Gaddis. That one was framed nicely by Norris at the bottom of the zone. Called him out. The Oakland fans for years were really, really good. Um, I mean, I'm talking about decades ago, but when they had good ball clubs and Billy Martin was the manager, those fans were crazy, wild crazy. Hayward in the air towards center. Crisp will play it on a hop. Jason Hayward has his first base hit of the night. Well, the A's franchise goes back to Philadelphia. They were the Philadelphia Athletics. Connie Mack was the owner and the manager there for 50 years. They then left Philadelphia, went to Kansas City. Then Charlie Finley took them from Kansas City to Oakland. Their franchise has won the World Series nine times, including three years in a row in the decade you were talking about, Joe, 72, 73, and 74, and then, of course, 1989. You know, the 70s and 80s, they had it working. Well, Billy Martin was there. They called it Billy Ball, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. They did. And the franchise was so down and out when they were in Kansas City. They were sometimes labeled the New York Yankees Farm Club, AAA Farm Club, because it seemed like so many Yankee players came from Kansas City in trades, including Roger Maris. No balls and a strike. Back then, I believe the ownership rules were a lot less stringent than they are now. One of the Royals' owners was a minority owner in the Yankees. And so they were able to make those deals, and huh, the Kansas City owner, <laughs> or one of them, won either way. Bill Gosselin's the batter. One on, one out. He rolled out to short his first time up. to ask Freddie before the game and I forgot to get to Bob Melvin's office. He had a pregame meeting with his club with turn back the clock night tomorrow night. I wonder if Peter Skipper will wear the coat and tie. Like Connie Mack did. Can you imagine managing 50 years? Isn't that incredible? That is. Not only that, but having to go upstairs every morning and handle all the other business affairs, write checks on the 1st and 15th to everybody. 
and then at the end of your work day go down and manage a game. Well actually that was day baseball in those days. Two balls and a strike for Gosselin. Hayward a good lead. And there's that breaking ball you were talking about John two and two. Yeah, they'd like to see more of the breaking ball and less of the slider. The two have become kind of the same. The breaking ball has this big 12 to 6 type action. The slider is just a smaller version of that. But the way that he pitches with fastballs it comes right after you. He's a tall guy that I think the up and down with the hitter gives them more trouble. That's up the middle and a base hit. Back to back singles for the Braves here in the third inning. Atlanta has four hits. Nice job of hitting there by Phil. Like a change up, off speed pitch of some kind. Stayed back. Didn't fight it off. It was another breaking ball, but he kept his hands back beautifully on it. Breaking ball, it was up. Isn't it amazing how much of a difference that makes when a Pitch is left above the belt versus a mistake that might actually bounce him too low below the knees. Yeah, and there's two versions of that. You could have a sharp breaking ball up with tight spin and late break, but when you have a lazy breaking ball up, it doesn't have that. It, it just sits there right there in the zone, and the hitter obviously recognizes it right away. Freeman's on fire and down a strike and the subject of our Academy Sports and Outdoors leaderboard. Three hit game yesterday gives him 16 on the year and only Jose Altuve of Houston has more. High fly to center. Crisp back. Warning track at the wall. Jumping track. Freddie Freeman. Remember yesterday, Isil Puig took a home, didn't take a home run away from him, took extra bases away from him on a ball that Freddie couldn't believe didn't get out of here. This one did. And I thought for a second, guys, that Coco Crisp, oh, there's that spinner you're talking about, John. I thought Coco Crisp was going to have a play on this, but he jumped too late. Well, the reason he jumped too late, he was having a hard time picking it up at the sky. He was looking, trying, you could see him trying to track it. And because he couldn't pick it up right away, he couldn't get back to that fence. To your point, maybe might have had a chance. But when he first went after this ball, I kept watching him trying to find it, and he couldn't do it quick enough. And then by the time that ball right there was catchable. Yeah, he didn't, he didn't get up there quick enough. So the Braves have put five on the board in the first three innings tonight. Homers by Justin Upton, Evan Gaddis, and a three-run bomb by Freddie Freeman. Pretty neat because Freddie was involved today this morning in the charity that fantasy football with fans that could come in and play against some of the Braves. So to be able to do that and have fun and hit a three run homer, what a great day so far. Take a look at Coco Crisp. Yeah, you're right, John. Didn't see it. Tracked it late. Line to third and a nice leaping grab by Donaldson. I think that uh, suggestion that the hitting coaches had for BJ Upton rubbed off on everybody else. Because everybody's aggressive tonight, putting good swings on the ball. They're getting some help from Hamill, who's hanging some breaking stuff, but they're not missing it. Yeah, Hamill's in the stretch. I know we showed the last two games, he's pitched really well. But when he doesn't pitch well, the ball is up. The hitters have not missed the ball that's up or hung.
One ball, no strikes for Chris Johnson. Looks inside. Ball two. Pirates try to come back in Washington. Nationals led 5 0. It's now 5 3. In the top of the fourth inning. And another shot to center. Crisp can't find it. Still searching for it. Still searching. It's over his head. And that'll bounce into the stands. Oh, what a lonely feeling that must be. He saw it off the bat. He knew approximately what direction, but had no idea on how deep. Welcome to Atlanta and the twilight. How appropriate. On zombie night, it's the twilight zone. <laughs> That's a ground rule double for Chris Johnson. And now Gaddis hits. Twenty four two baggers for Chris. And that's what Coco Crisp sees when the ball gets above the grandstands. And Gaddis hit by a pitch. Tommy Lestella will be the eighth man to hit in the inning, and Bob Melvin's already pondering his lineup card. He's got a little bit of jersey. Jesse Chavez loosening up in their bullpen. The, the A's had a late lead over the Royals yesterday, and the bullpen let that get away. They gave up five runs in the seventh inning and lost the game seven to three. With all the acquisitions in rotation by the A's, it's Jesse Chavez who's become the long man for Oakland. He's made 21 starts for him this year, but now he's in the pen. And he may be getting an early call tonight. Strike one to La Stella. And that one all the way to the backstop. It's a cross up right there. So not only have the outfielders had a hard time picking up the ball, the catcher and the pitcher. Not on the same wavelength right there and lucky that ball was up. That was scored a pass ball. That's yeah, a bad break because that was not at all what he was expecting. Last he is ought to thank his lucky stars. He was on the inside shoulder. One ball, one strike. Stella sprays it out of play. It's one and two. I don't know if Norris would have had a play, but the way he reacted when that ball went by him was like, oh, hum, I'll go walk back here and get this. And the ball came off the padding right back to him. Swing again here with a 2 2 count. Five runs, six hits for the Braves. No runs, one hit for Oakland. I haven't seen him really bust anybody in with a fastball left handed. Everything's been an assortment of breaking balls and change ups. I think Tommy can afford to really kind of dive into the plate. In the air to center, Crisp looks like he's got this one tracked down. He does. And that will retire the side. Hit it high and watch it fly in Atlanta tonight. The Braves have hit three homers. Freddie Freeman's was a three run shot. Atlanta adds to its lead, and we go to the fourth. Five nothing. Braves lead the A's.
And I think there's a Uh, certain types of efforts that we will be undertaking to, to move the game forward. I think in particular the modernization of the game that you saw with instant replay, innovations like that that Commissioner Seelig has begun. I think the owners have a vision of the game continuing to move forward. Sonova's greatness made here. Manfred will re-succeed Bud Seelig. He was eventually elected unanimously. It wasn't without some work. It took four and a half hours, and for a long time, in fact, the first vote was 20 to 10. He needed 23 votes to eventually be elected. That finally happened. Seelig has been commissioner for the past 22 years. So I think it's Kennesaw Mountain Landis and then Bud Seelig, the two longest tenured commissioners in the history of the game. And we wish Mr. Manfred all the luck in the world as he takes over our beloved sport wonderful opportunity and wonderful challenges ahead we'll see what the game does under his leadership as Alex Wood with a big lead five nothing after three innings of play something that we haven't talked about at all is the relationship Mr. Manfred has with the players union that's apparently a very good one which is always a good thing players and owners as that ball is fair past Chris Johnson and it ricochets off the fence. And on his way to second is Derek Norris with a leadoff double. <laughs> I don't know how he didn't take a tumble. That's an athletic move right there. He had the chair between his legs and he was scooting <laughs> on the face. I mean, this is pretty good. This ball just goes over the bag. It doesn't have to land fair as long as it goes over the bag. And then here's where the madness stops. It's in between yeah. his legs and he's got it. <laughs> right of cowboy. He did a nice <laughs> job. That is that's my star so far in the game. <laughs> if Tom were here, he'd say he's probably a pitcher. Mm -hmm. With that. Athletic move down the left field line. Good work. Nate Fryman, first baseman for Oakland. He tapped back to mound his first time up. This is a big dude. This guy's 6'8. Oh, man, that's a great strike zone. When was the last time you saw a position player playing in the big league 6'8? It's been a while. I told was Richie Sexton. He was six six. He was close to it. Dave Winfield, six eight. No, Dave six six. Six six. Uh huh. Seem six eight. Frank Howard was six eight. Six eight, three hundred pounds when he played. There's a guy from San Diego. Um, big guy. He ended up getting hurt. Outfielder Kyle, Kyle Blanks. Blanks. I think he was like 6 8. He's an Oakland A, too. Yes, he is. A lot of big, tall pitchers. Ooh. As Fryman uses that 6 8 leverage and cranks one to deep left and gone. Who is right? His second homer in the big leagues this year. And Oakland's on the board. It's now a 5 2 game. Change up. Kyle Blank, six six. Six six. Yeah, that was close. I was drawing a blank on it. Yeah. Guy Aspo bounces one up the middle, and three straight Oakland hits have begun the fourth inning. So five two game now, and here's Reddick. He popped out to Chris Johnson in the second. You know, the hardest thing in pitching can be when you've been in stretches of games, which Alex Wood has been, seems like the whole year it's been 
close games, not a lot of run support. Two to one game, you struck out 12, you're in the game. When your team jumps out to a 5 nothing lead, you learn how to deal with that. You would think it'd be easy, and in theory it is, but it does take you a little bit away from whew, a little bit of breath, a little bit of fresh air. You've got to find a way to lock it down and limit the damage, especially in this inning. People don't understand. You know, you, you're in those games all the time. Every five days doesn't seem possible that your team could be in a one-run game, two to one. Now you're seeing the bullpen get up because the importance now at this point in the season for the Braves is no longer try to get a starter through five, get him a win. Freddy's. That's what we talked about the other day, John, was that with uh, 40 games left, you got to you got to manage to win every game and you've got to put the, your best team on the field every night the best you can play who's hot who's not and not worry about hurting anybody's feelings. Whether you've got a five spot on the board for you and support of you and you can't get through the fifth inning hang with them. But I think Alex can settle down here and get out of this. Get through this inning with only the two spot. That was a quick two runs they put on the board. Roller toward first. Freeman fought about second, but takes the sure out. Diaspo's in safely at second. Reddick is out number one. And Perino will be the hitter here in the Oakland fourth. Yeah. He just gets enough of it to keep it fair, and of course. Freeman looking. He knows he has time to go to the bag. Just seeing if there's any chance he can throw it to second, get the lead runner. I bet he had the runner in his way. Too much obstruction there. So Perino, 0 for 1. And time call. Played by Goslin too on a hard short hop. Oakland settles for two, but they ran themselves out of a chance to clear the pitcher in the fourth inning. It's now a 5 2 Atlanta game, home fourth coming up.
All season long, Braves baseball is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. The right stuff, the low price every day. Christian pop band Newsboys will perform in the Braves Summer Concert Series Sunday, August 31st. It's presented by Coca-Cola and Delta Airlines. Free concert after the game. VIP field passes are available for $20 each. We hope you'll join us. The Marlins will be in town for the final series in August. And that'll wrap up the gauntlet. Yeah. For the month of August. Well, we knew this was going to be a tough month. You, all you had to do was look at the standings and look at the schedule after the All Star break and know that August might tell the tale for the Braves. So far, they're three and four on this homestand against Washington, the Dodgers, and now Oakland. We hit the road after the game Sunday night and head to Pittsburgh to play the Pirates, then to Cincinnati, then to New York. That's a huge road trip. I think that road trip is going to define the season. I know it's easy to say that on any one given stretch, but Pittsburgh and their rally back into the postseason picture, of course, is ahead of the Braves. And anytime you're facing teams ahead of you, you got to climb that ladder and get back in the mix. Cincinnati, of course, not too far behind. You kind of run the Pittsburgh bandwagon. Yeah, when it wasn't fashionable. Yeah, why, when why they were, did you like? Them? Well, they're 11 games out. They're starting pitching other than. Garrett Cole had like one win. It was it was a number you go can't continue. And I thought last year was was not a fluke. I thought their team and the ability to score was going to get better. And I like this kid they were calling up. Polanco. Uh huh. And I thought that they did something. That would allow him to in, insert some energy. And uh, I think if McCutcheon doesn't get hurt, it's going to be tough to keep them out of the playoffs the way they were rolling. And, and the fact that both them in Kansas City, I was both intrigued to see which one was going to prove la last year was not an aberration or just out of character. And I think both have done a nice job. You saw those standings like the Braves, the Pirates in a critical stretch of games. Now their next 18 games are against National League playoff contention teams. The Braves are included in that stretch. And Bob Melvin is making his way to the mound. That might be the end of the line for Mr. Hamill. They had Eric O'Flaherty, the former Brave, warming up, and he might be getting the summons here in the fourth inning of play. Remember, as well as Oakland has played all year long, they have a slim lead in their division. Their advantage over the Angels is only two games, and they cannot afford to give up any more offense to the Braves, who've already scored five runs tonight. So a leadoff walk for B.J. Upton ends the night for Jason Hamill. As Eric O'Flaherty checks in, let's check in with Tom Hart. All right, Chip, thanks. Time now for our SunTrust shining moment. And a lot of guys were all wet at the ballpark today. The ALS Ice Bucket Challenge took over the Braves Clubhouse. You couldn't find a guy who didn't participate. And it was a great way to raise right, money and awareness. My brother Andrew's uh, Ice Bucket Challenge. And I also challenge. Oh, my gosh. Jason Hayward, Chipper Jones, and our three newest Hall of Famers, Bobby Cox, Tom Glavin, and Greg Maddox. I'm Jason Hayward, and I accept Freddie Freeman's Ice Bucket Challenge. Oh, oh my God. Woo. All right, I accepted your challenge. Now I call out Craig, Walden, and Varv if we can get him out here. All right, David Carpenter, we accept your challenge. You know, probably the neatest of them all was David Carpenter, who played college baseball at West Virginia. One of his teammates' fathers battled through ALS. He dedicated this to him. But the biggest surprise I got today is that John Smoltz has been living under a rock. He had no idea what any of this was, even this afternoon. That's correct. He is correct. They're working me hard. I'm on the road a lot. <laughs> yes. Yes, they are. Yeah. Well, time to welcome an old friend back to the mound in Atlanta. It's Eric O'Flaherty. The A's took their sweet time getting him back into big league action. You know, Eric's coming back from his assorted elbow problems. And since he's come back, look how his numbers have stacked up. They've been very careful to use him in spot duty, not work him in back to back days, trying to build up some arm strength. But so far, so good. 
Well, it's a good situation he, here because he's coming up to bat. More than likely, that'll be it. But yeah, but he and Venner's had their elbow surgery approximately the same time last spring. Johnny's though was his second Tommy John surgery. Don't know how you can have a better year in relief than Eric O'Flaherty had with the Braves in 2011. That year for Atlanta, he went two and four. 78 games, an 098 earned run average. In 73 and two thirds innings, he struck out 67 men and gave up only eight earned runs. It's a tough luck, four losses right there. And he got a two year deal with the A's. Pitch out of their bullpen, and Wood is trying to punt and is behind 0 and 2. As was explained to me today, they pretty much knew they weren't going to get a full year out of Eric that it was going to still take some time into the season before he was available to pitch so what they were banking on was a little bit of time this year and then be 100 percent and a valuable asset for them next year. I'll say this watching Eric work before and after games to try to keep everything in shape especially when he was trying to make sure he didn't have a recurrence of a bad back. Nothing lazy about this guy. Runner goes and Wood got it down with two strikes and there's only one play. Fourth sacrifice for Alex Wood. Tell you what I know it's hard because BJ was probably just on a straight steal. He didn't look in if he could have looked in he caught he could have gone to all the way to third on this play. Yeah. Two strikes you're anticipating maybe it's not a, a strike but you see right there he slides in thinking I'm going to beat the throw and there was no throw because the bunt went down. So an RBI chance for Jason Hayward he's already scored a run. That came in the third he singled. And galloped home on Freddie Freeman's three run homer. And a strike. So Hayward now a four game hitting streak five hits in that stretch and a chance for another multi hit game he's got 13 of those in the last 27 he's played. I think the challenge for the Braves now is can they maintain their offense can't sit on this Oakland team with five early you got to keep putting on the pressure we saw how quickly they can strike two. Well, the biggest thing for the Braves, and you look just well, no longer than the road trip that they were on, where all of this has kind of started. And obviously, they didn't win a game. They don't have to score five every day. It's just when the runs are there to be had, you've got to cash in more. You've got to have a higher percentage. And I've never seen personally two days in a row where bases are loaded, nobody out, and you don't score. That to me, kind of is a microcosm of the way the year has gone. And that's just is gonna that just doesn't happen. And so uh, they haven't really got on track since then. And you see what John's talking about our Coors Light cold hard facts. That average with runners in scoring position that has run so hot and cold all year long and when when it's cold it is Coors Light cold. Can't get those guys in. One ball, two strikes. And you heard me say this over and over again, and and it, it may just means repeating. Look, when a pitcher can go to too many areas of your lineup to get out of trouble, there's no fear factor. You've got to have a fear factor of guys that a will put it in contact. You know, with a runner on third, less than two outs. Uh oh, this guy's going to put it in play, and a run's going to score. Or you can pitch around guys because they will expand the strike zone, and those are the things that. A lineup and hitters have to learn how to be patient. Yes, last year everything looked great. They record hit a record home runs, or it seemed like it hit a home run every game and ran away with the division. That wasn't going to happen this year. There's no way to repeat that, in my opinion, based on the pitching that exists today. So, is it an easy fix? Not really, because it's like changing the stripes on an animal. Sometimes you can't. You are what you are, and you have to. As Freddie has been really. <laughs> Give him credit for trying everything he can as a manager to get the offense 
jump start. Well, there's the patience you were speaking of. Hayward was down two strikes quickly and then drew a walk from O'Flaherty. Second walk of the inning. Braves have also had a hit batsman tonight. There was a, a note I saw today. Some people were talking about Adrian Gonzalez in the series he had against Atlanta. Drove in a ton of runs. And over the same stretch where Freddie Freeman has hit right at 500. Uh, 15 for 29. Over his last eight games, Freddie's driven in two runs coming into tonight's game. Gonzalez had driven in nine, and their average was about the same. So, D. Gordon, you see quick getting on base in front of Freddie a lot more and getting a lot more opportunities for Gonzalez than Freeman. That's why sabermetrics folks will say sometimes RBIs are not an accurate reflection of how good a hitter a guy is because it's dependent on the point you just made. You can knock yourself in, but if nobody's on in front, that's all you can do. And Freeman had a chance tonight with two aboard, and he cashed it in with a big fly to center. So here's Gosselin. Two on for Phil, getting the start at shortstop if you're just joining us. Nothing wrong with Andrelton Simmons' ankle tonight. He had an abscessed tooth and spent most of the day at the dentist's office. Love it. I was just about to say this is a perfect situation for a double steal or a double hit and run in in the regard that Phil Gosselin handle, handles the bat so well. It's not like you'd sit back and wait for a three run homer from Phil. He's just you don't expect that from him. But putting the ball in play that's a different story and might be worth a try. That's what he did all year at Gwinnett. When Phil was called up, he was hitting 344 at AAA and had 130 hits for the G Braves. And he's one for two in tonight's game. Good speed aboard. Upton and Hayward, second and first, one out. That's headed for the club level to our right. A ball and two strikes. Almost looked like he took a shot of that hole there between first and second. You see the second baseman is almost playing to where he could hold on. BJ Gosselin took a chance to uh, take that pitch fastball away and slap it through the hole. Smart, smart hitting. Good thinking. Gosselin swung and missed and he will be out as the ball gets away from the catcher the Braves runners can advance 90 feet Norris had a tough time behind the plate tonight. He's already had one pass ball. Let's see how that one scored on the strikeout And it is another pass ball and there are two outs for Freeman He just kind of ducked on that one. Yeah, he didn't get crossed up He was just kind of like almost like he's getting out of the way So lefty lefty here Freeman versus O'Flaherty. Good cut and fouled away. Sense the pressure. I mean, he's a young player. Freddie Freeman just signed a big contract, going to be here for a while. He almost has to be superhuman when the team's struggling. You know, you can't, as you said, you know, other than driving yourself in. But everybody would love for him to drive drive in runs every time they're on the bases when your team's struggling. And he's just going to have to stay as patient as he can because he's got a nice year going. I mean, it's not. It's 295, 17, and 67. Well, on August 1st, he started play at 282. His average now is 295. So he's definitely trending in the right direction. As this one smoked again to center, but Crisp is going to have a play. And that will retire the side. The Braves get a couple of walks, leave both men stranded, and we're off to the fifth.
South is brought to you by Blimpy. Joe Simpson, John Smoltz, Tom Hart with you from the ballpark. I'm Chip Carey. We head to the fifth inning where Alex Wood is trying to even his record at 9-9. Nine and nine. He leads Oakland 5-2. And he'll face Sam Fold, who will pinch it for Eric O'Flaherty here. Old grounds to short. Gosselin's got it and a close play at first. Four out number one. You're used to seeing a cannon over there. <laughs> Not that he doesn't have a good arm, but Simmons will make anybody look. Make him look slow. Yeah. So here's Crisp. He's pulled the ball third twice. And he hits one to short. Braves had him played perfectly. Gosselin slid to his right. Three steps. And that's exactly where Coco Crisp hit it. And that's out number two. Alex Wood has a big lead. Starting to get back in a groove again. He's our Georgia lottery hitting the jackpot. Great numbers over his last three starts. But that last one was a beaut against Washington when the Braves really needed it. Pitching into the eighth inning, just gave up one run, 12 strikeouts. The one run coming on a homer. Well, what I also like too is uh, I think it was over 115 pitches. If yeah, I'm correct. That's almost unheard of these days. Still, 124 boggles, boggles my mind. Used to be average 124. Johnny Gomes, the batter, Alex has walked him twice. You guys, who the hottest pitcher in baseball right now would be? What, who, who, who would you think? What would you guess? Clayton Kershaw. He's won sure. what, 11 in a row, right? That would be a good answer, and it probably would be a correct one. But a close second, Corey Kluber. All Corey Kluber from Cleveland on fire. Can you make Kluber from Cleveland? Say that six times fast. <laughs> I'm gonna have to untie my tongue during the break. We'll finish John's story <laughs> as you see who's up. Presented by Delta next. Lottery, Toyota, and AT&T, mobilizing your world. Well, the Oakland A's offense has been ice cold since they traded Joanna Cespedes to the Boston Red Sox. Tonight, they've scored but two. It's because Alex Wood has pitched real good ball tonight. The Braves have played long ball. They've hit three out and lead game one of this series 
by three runs here in the fifth. MLB.TV Premium, the number one live streaming sports service, is celebrating 12 years. Join the millions of subscribers. Watch every out-of-market game live in true HD on over 400 devices. Visit Braves.com for details. End of the line for Eric O'Flaherty. Oakland's into its bullpen again. And as we mentioned earlier, Jesse Chavez was up and throwing. Now he's pitching to Justin Upton for the Braves. Jesse got off to a good start. He was four and one at the beginning of the year, and then he kind of fell on some hard times that eventually cost him his spot in the rotation after the trade was made. High 80s, low and low 90s, two seamer and four seamer, and a lot of cutters. A Steve right call to me it reminds me of a Tim Hudson if you watch a pitch a little bit the drop and drive kind of a pitching motion a little similar to Tim Hudson right there maybe ah, maybe I'm stretching a little bit just a little different leg kick but yeah. the same mechanic Toward third, Donaldson's got it, and there's the first out. You said something a minute ago that, that kind of got my attention when you said, I used to average 124 pitches. No, I mean, that used to be average. That used to be average, yeah, and like, there was a generation before you oh, yeah. that used to say, 124 pitches an average? My gosh, I threw 150, 160 yeah. every night. And made 40 starts and yeah, right. yeah, four-man rotations. So it's all relative to your, your era and what was acceptable and these days with the protection everybody gives their pitchers this is an acceptable number is 100 pitches they start getting antsy like it or not no swing by Chris Johnson who's grounded out and doubled tonight but I think the, the bigger problem for me is that everyone throwing everybody in the same box like you will tell your pitching coach and your manager whether you've had it or not by the way you throw by whether or not you're laboring by whether or not now it's almost automatic you look at the board you look at the stadiums like uh oh 90 pitches he's only got two innings left that part I don't understand I mean that was a huge game that Alex Wood pitched I mean, you're going to take him out of the game as dominant as he's been at 104 pitches because you just want to. That's the new norm. I, that would have been a tough, tough thing for me to swallow. Watching him exit the game. Johnson walks with one out. He's aboard for a second time, and it'll bring up Evan Gaddis. He's homered, and he's been hit by a pitch. And I guess, you know, I, w I wouldn't say anything, and nor would anybody else before me. If we were cutting down on injuries, we're not. We're having more. Like there's got to be something that's tying into this Good point. That, that if they were cutting down on injuries, they'd say, "Oh, you know, this is working. This is the new way." The injuries are so high and so rampant, it's almost like, "Oh well, like the common cold. No big deal. We'll just replace it with another arm." In the air to right, and that's playable for Reddick. Meanwhile, we're not developing pitchers like we used to. We're allowing them to do max effort stuff. There's no minor league basis for which they can learn how to pitch at 80%, 90%, pitch with a sore arm. The difference between sore and injury is gone. The slightest thing of, of, of you know, and I, I, I guess I don't understand the long-term contracts and the high money for starting pitching to go five and six innings. Maybe that's, you know, maybe that's it. Maybe that's what they're figuring that they can replace a bullpen quicker. But you'll see it show up in organizations when they're trying to make a stretch run and they're trying to get to the playoffs and those horses aren't going to the mound and doing what they have to do and you rely on that bullpen, it, it gets pretty taxing quick. That's why I think the acquisitions from Oakland's perspective of Lester and Samarja are so important. Those guys are horses. Yeah. And in the case of Lester, battle tested too. We won't see Samarja in this series. We'll see Lester here Sunday night. That'll be an ESPN game. 
So you said Clayton Kershaw, and your answer would have been slightly correct. 8-0 in his last 10, 1 ERA, 1. Okay, 47 hits, 92 Ks, only 11 walks. Corey Kluber, in American League, 7-1, and 1.15 ERA. To left. Okay. 70 hits, 40, uh, 44 hits, 75 strikeouts, 10 walks. Pretty close. And pretty good numbers for both those men. Nothing happening in the Braves' fifth. 5-2, heading to the sixth. Deep our Home Depot tools from the dugout from 538.com and fan graphs. Percentage of relief pitchers throwing an average speed of 95 or faster has climbed every year since it was first tracked in 2002. Home Depot tools from the dugout. Guys throwing harder and the specialization of the bullpen means they're throwing more often as well. And is that John Smoltz and Joe Simpson a reason why scoring is down in the big leagues in this specialized era? Uh, that's a percentage of it. Yeah, I, I don't think it's the only reason, but I think the fact that, you know, spring training games, right? You face eight guys, seven guys sometimes, hard to get your rhythm, hard to face uh, the same guy more than once. But the specialization, uh, whether or not it continues, I still will be surprised if the injuries keep going the way they are. How do organizations keep coming up with those arms? If the injury rate continues bullpens look at the amount of pitchers that certain organizations have had to go through the Yankees are going to go through their record amount of, of pitchers. Um, it's amazing. They're still in it. Yeah, Texas has used the DL 20 something times this year. Not all of them pitchers obviously but a club that had playoff hopes. And a team we'll see in September. They've been decimated by the injury bug as Braves had Donaldson played perfectly. Lestella in a shift. Grabbed it right behind the second base bag for the first out. Yeah, just put you Darvish on that list too. Smart move by Alex here to let that go. Had to know that Lestella was playing up the middle. Well, now for Derek Norris. Excuse Sorry, me, but my point it, it, over the long haul of 162 games. The Braves can shorten a season and I mean a game better than anybody right when they're healthy in the bullpen seven eight nine see right. But how many times can you expect them to keep doing that in a course of one hundred sixty two games. If your starters don't have anybody eating up two hundred twenty two hundred thirty innings. You're asking your pen to pick up too much of that that ball game and. That to me is what's going to wear out the trend that we're in today. Just because. It's harder to hit and runs are at a premium now. Well, you think about the era in which you pitched here in Atlanta. You and Tom Glavin, 
and Greg Maddox. All three of you guys as starters. And I'm looking at Maddox's innings pitched. First, the offering to Norris, which is sky toward right center and tailing toward Hayward, who will catch it for the second out. Maddox led the league in innings pitched five consecutive years. We're talking 230, 240, 263 innings, 268 innings in back to back years. That was with the Cubs, but then even in Atlanta, a 251 innings pitched season for the Braves. Tom Glavin. 220, 240, 230, 240. You turn the page to Mr. Smoltz here and check out his innings pitched. Back to back seasons, 253, 256. Then he went to the bullpen, then came back in 2005, 229 innings of work at all 33 starts. That'll save some bullpen work. And they weren't the only three. There were other guys on the staffs along the way that were contributing a lot of innings, too. Well, you wish you could almost, and, and I know, again, it's a game of specialization. Wood tied up Fryman, who hit a long homer against him last time up. I almost wish that if you called a guy into the game, he had to face three guys. Instead of the one, you know, well, specialist lefty, it faces only one guy, and then the guy comes in and faces two guys. You see guys all the time with 72 appearances and 50 innings. Right. I mean, oh well. Well, there are those who feel that this this trend began in the town in which our opponent plays with Tony Larusa and the Oakland A's, when he would mix and match with his bullpen on a nightly basis. As you said, they won the World Series in 89. But I still bet you he had a couple guys that could give him those nights where he didn't have to do that. When oh, you're doing it bet. four out of five times, five times, you know. I mean, what Clayton Kershaw means to the Dodgers is every fifth day, boys, you got the night off from the sixth inning on, maybe pitch the ninth every once in a while. And they got a couple guys that can do that. Little ground ball, deep short. Gosselin's got it, unloads quickly, and Fryman, a big man, out by a step at first base. Three up, three down for Alex. He set down eight straight. He's due second with a 5 2 lead. The Atlanta Braves welcome Acuity Brands Lighting from Conyers to tonight's game. Acuity has been coming to Braves games as a company outing since 2007. Get your group together and enjoy food, drinks, and discounts for all remaining games this season. Get started at Braves.com slash groups or by calling 404-577-9100. I don't see any zombies in that group. Oh, it's early yet. Just with a fireworks show. That's when they'll come out. As 
B.J. Upton leads off for the Braves here in the home sixth. Upton, then it looks like Ryan Dolmets grabbed a bat. He'll pinch it for Alex Wood. And then Jason Hayward. Washington still leads the Pirates 5 3 in the sixth. Arizona's beating Miami in Miami tonight. That's a 3 2 Diamondbacks game. That's over the Cubs 3 2 seventh inning at City Field. That panic. Panic, I tell you, in Detroit. As Seattle has uh, jumped on the Tigers. That's a big series with those two teams kind of locked with now. Wild card. Six to one, Seattle. Mariners are playing really good baseball. And we were out west. As Upton's down on strikes. You get their big three, you're in big trouble if you play Seattle. Iwakuma, King Felix, and Chris Young. But more than that, guys, have we seen a better bullpen than the one we saw briefly in Seattle? They were good. They were well set up. I like the Dodger bullpen a lot too, but uh, those guys in Seattle knew what was going on. Now their young stud that they're high on, James Paxton, went today. He had been hurt most of the year with a shoulder situation. And Seattle is for real. Well, so they're starting to hit too. I mean, yep. that's been their problem the last couple of years. When are these young guys going to step up and start to deliver offensively? I mean, they've had number one, number two, number three overall picks. As you see. Doma try to bunt 0 and 2 trying to beat the shift must have been listening to John you got to stay there and bunt it though you don't need to be bunting and running because all you got to do is put it down the third base line you could walk you know and again you can practice this stuff to get better <laughs> it's not hard and Ryan took a call third strike Back to back punch outs for Jesse Chavez. And out of the top of the order we go. Looked like a nice cutter. DNC Bank pitch tracks. Yep. Scorched across the outside part. So Wood, who had really gotten on the best roll of the night, he had retired eight in a row, 96 pitches, and he is out of the game. They'll turn it over to the pen. That'll leave Alex with 123 big league innings this year. A little ground ball to first. And it's booted. Freiman waited for a friendly hop and didn't get one. And that'll be an error. You know what was nice about that is even though it was a jam job and a easy out, Jason hustled all the way. He didn't just half step to first base. So the inning continues with Phil Gosselin up. And he drives one to deep center. Crisp going back, still going back at the wall. She's gone. Let's see if he gets a silent treatment. It's a huge pick me up after getting a bonus just a bonus to be on base and then follow it up with a two run homer. Wow. Coco crisp has gotten very familiar with the fans in center field tonight hasn't he. Freeman hit one out there. Gosselin has hit one out there. The Braves have hit four homers tonight. Are beating Oakland seven to two in the sixth. 
first career extra base hit for Phil Goss. Wow. That's why you never know when you come to the park what you might have to do and who could be that hero. Well, Gosselin will get the headlines for the sixth inning, but don't forget Jason Hayward hustling down the line on the first baseman's error kept the inning alive. And the Braves play a long ball tonight. They enjoy a 7 2 lead going to the seventh. The Atlanta Braves and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Atlanta Braves. What a fun night and what an unforgettable night for Braves rookie Phil Gosselin. His first home run in the big leagues came just a moment ago in the bottom of the sixth inning. Four homers hit by Atlanta tonight. They enjoy a 7 2 lead. And now David Carpenter, the first reliever, on to follow Alex Wood tonight. 48th game for David. Two games against the Dodgers, an inning and a third. No runs, four hits. David has the bottom part of the order coming up Kiaspo, Reddick, and Perino. That trails a combined one for six in the game. This has been a sloppy night for Oakland. The Braves have taken advantage of that. The error a moment ago by the big first baseman, Fryman. Kiaspo forgot how many outs there were in the fourth inning and was doubled up after the A's scored their only two runs. Yeah, it doesn't happen too often to that kind of team. Bob Melvin's done a great job. I don't know if he gets enough credit for really pushing the right buttons and getting the team to buy into the certain theories that they have to and keeping everyone as happy as possible. In the American League, you just don't see that many guys play because there's no reason to. Most of them have set lineups, guys that play every single day. He's been a good manager in all three spots in the big leagues, Seattle, Arizona, and oh. Oakland. Man, what a good pitch. Yeah, that's a missed call there. I agree with you, Chip. I thought he got a raw deal in Arizona, especially. PNC Bank. Pitch tracks. Come on, lads. And that missed low. Bob Melvin has finished first or second in his division, managed six times in 10 years, and he's in first place in this, his 11th as a big league manager. Full count to Kiaspo, and he struck out. He was ready to head to first. Nine straight A's have been retired. Yeah, 
a little bit of a five pitch five strike strikeout. He threw five strikes. Yeah. That's good. And better ball those would carry over to the next hitter. Yes. Right? <laughs> you remember Melvin when he played for the Tigers? Yes. Sure do. Forget which pitcher he would catch. Thinking maybe Milt Wilcox. Yeah, something I, I Dave Rosema. He had somebody he would regularly catch. So I don't think it was Jack Morris. Who was the other right handed pitcher who was so tough? Dan Petrie? Petrie. I was trying to say Peters. I knew that wasn't right. Dan Petrie. Slider had that tight slider. Oh, and two to Rennick. And that ball's popped up. Braves had a shift on for him. It's Chris Johnson backpedaling. And he's there to make the play. Did Dan Petrie pitch for the Braves? He did. Late in his career? He sure did. The reason I know that is he was the first one to introduce to me back when I was with the Tigers and in single A, he came down for a rehab start. It was the first professional I'd ever seen come down and rehab and treat us the way he did and take care of the young players, you know, in a way that uh, he was down to get his work and then come back up. So it was pretty unique to see that. And then he did come over with the Braves for a short period of time and uh, try to continue his career. Two quick outs for Carpenter and a quick strike to Andy Perino. Boy, times have changed back in A ball when he was treating the team to dinner. It was at a certain price. Rehab was killing me. <laughs> I, was, I don't mean to tell you, man, I was buying a lot of dinners and they were way up there. Wait a minute. <laughs> No, no chocolate wonderful restaurants. No, for it was Smoltz. Outback Steakhouse. The guy, you know, they loved it. And that's just part of the routine when you go down. There's an expectation. But I was I was doing that a lot. There was a lot of different <laughs> cities and a lot of different meals. Now, was that the whole team or just? Yeah, the whole team. Really? Oh, yeah. I'd get the bill a couple of times in some cities. I'm like, what? <laughs> Would I break a window? It <laughs> <laughs> was fun, though. And those kids, they had to just. Yeah, love. It. I mean, it was it was. It's not just peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for the most part. I mean, but they don't have the luxury of getting the spreads that the big league clubs get, and uh, clubbies do the best they can in those cities. But yeah, their eyes light up, and they're hope they're hopeful. I can remember times where we'd be getting on the bus to leave a city, and this is even in AAA, where the club you'd come running out to the bus and tell the manager that so-and-so forgot to pay his dues. Oh, yeah. Because, I mean, they ran such a, they were on such a fine line in terms of breaking even. Yep. Meal money, five day, five dollars a day in AWOL. It was Burger King or McDonald's every road trip. Ball two strikes. And a swing and a miss. David Carpenter has a one, two, three, seventh. We stretch in Atlanta. Beware, it's zombie night. Atlanta seven, Oakland two.
Georgia Power, The Home Depot, and Blimpy. Try the new Hoboken Hero filled with savory Italian flavors. Blimpy, America's sub shop. Oh. Beautiful night in Atlanta. She's not a zombie. She's got the best seat in the house tonight. And this big crowd on Friday night fireworks and zombie night has really enjoyed what the Braves have done to Oakland in game one of this weekend series. Four homers to support Alex Wood. It's a 7-2 game and Atlanta will now take a peek at yet another Oakland reliever. It's right-hander Dan Otero. Beg your pardon, Dan Otero was warming. He still is. And Jesse Chavez is going to start the inning. My mistake. As Upton is down a strike. This will in all likelihood be Jesse's last inning. His spots due first in the eighth inning. Good night for Justin. He got the party started with a leadoff homer in the second inning. A low laser. Twenty second of the year. Justin has been a wrecking crew in his home park. That's 15 home runs and 43 RBIs here at Turner Field this year. Oh, just a good pitch to hit there, and he knows it. Looked like a good fastball right in his wheelhouse. It pulled off of it just a little bit. Didn't get that pitch and is struck out. So first time Justin has gone down swinging. That's four strikeouts for Chavez tonight. Since, since we were talking about Otero and Chavez, do we have a definitive rule, John? I know we've got had some speculation on this about when is a guy in the game, at what point when a reliever is coming in, and then a manager goes, "Oh no, not you. Give me the other guy." If a guy gets to the dirt, infield dirt, is he in the game? I, I would think so. I mean, uh, they had that what Dodgers? Yeah, it, it's come up a, a couple ago. of times. We had it happen this year. Yeah, we did. When the I can't remember which team it was. Maybe our fans at home can help. But a reliever came in out of the bullpen, actually crossed the white line, and was sent scurrying back. It was the Rockies when they had, I believe, when the Rockies were here, they had uh, or the Brewers. That's right. It was the Brewers. They had a miscommunication. Of, they, That's right. With the phone, with or the phone, and, yeah. and tried to let everybody know that they had no way of letting them know who's coming in. That's why in the in the older days you used to have signs for pitchers. Yeah, and yeah, you could make these hand gestures. I want the tall guy. I want the small guy. I want the round guy. Why'd you look at me when you said that? I, the I, tall I, guy. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good. Phew. Yeah. A little worried. <laughs> As uh, the 3-1 pitch to Chris Johnson's coming and it's fouled back. Gretchen reminds us though that it was graduation and yeah. both the pitching coach and the bullpen coach were gone. That's right. That was the setup. Yeah, Rick Kranitz is their pitching coach. He wasn't with the team and they called up their minor league pitching coach to coordinate with. It was a brief stay for him. <laughs> yeah. 3-2 pitch. Popped up foul and in the air. We weren't sure whether the pitcher was in the game once he crossed the white line. But Tom, you have clarification on what the rule is? Yeah, after that series against the Brewers, we talked to Freddie Gonzalez about it, and it's a, a basically a change in the way that rule is applied over this offseason. No longer are you going to be stuck with the guy who came across the line. It's when he is announced. So when you tell the home plate umpire we're making a change and we're bringing in Smith, that's the change. Bouncing ball to short. So if Freddy Gonzalez goes out and says I want Carpenter and Vavaro comes in Vavaro's not in the game. It's going to be Carpenter. 
Indeed, was it? In, indeed, and it, it came up because there was a, one of these umpires, I be, may have been even as recently as last year, where the manager came out and there were two guys up, but then there was only one guy up, and he thought there was still only the right-hander, and he kind of motioned to the bullpen down the right field line with his left hand, kind of like a hook shot, like, a, I want that guy, it's time. Well, he raised his left hand, and that umpire, this veteran umpire, held him to the standard and said, you have to bring in the left-hander. You signaled with your left hand. That was the impetus behind the change. That's a good one. Well, we have, and I, I don't know of many other bullpens that have three mounts. And we've had back in the day three guys warming up for two different situations. Can you imagine the confusion with three guys warming up? And it's hard to get three guys catching two, by the way. One pitcher had to do it one time. Well, that's why the umpires like it when the manager actually goes out with the lineup card and goes over with the umpire who he wants to put in the game and where. Did Gannis go? No. One ball, two strikes. I did a game in Chicago with Dusty Baker where he pointed to the umpire, the double switch, and who was going in. Well, the umpire didn't get the double switch right, wrote it on the lineup card incorrectly. The uh, Cubs sent a guy up. He was out for batting out of order, even though Dusty Baker told him what he wanted to do. He didn't go out and physically and verbally meet face to face with the umpire did it from the dugout. That was a little tough to explain to the post game press. Yeah. 2 2 popped up. And Coco Crisp will come in. Kayaspo at second drifts out and he's there. And that retires the side. On we go to the eighth. Braves in command in game one tonight. One hundredth anniversary of the 1914 Miracle Braves who beat the Philadelphia Athletics in the World Series that year four games to none. We'll turn back the clock. We'll also roll back our prices. The players will wear throwback uniforms. We'll have twenty five cent popcorn peanuts and Cracker Jack one dollar hot dogs. Old time baseball will be on display here at Turner Field. We hope you'll join us and we will have the broadcast tomorrow night six thirty with Braves live seven ten. Our first pitch. Back to our AT&T Universe trivia question. Name the winning pitcher in the last Braves victory over the Oakland Athletics. I'm going to say an old Oakland Athletic, Tim Hudson. I like your call. Um, 2008. I'm trying to remember our rotation back then. Well, it could have been a relief pitcher too. Might have been Brad Woodall. I got nothing. I'm going with Tim Hudson. Come on, really? Joe Joe Reyes is the answer. Like Ricky Henderson, you could ask me about 50 people if they were my teammate. 
kind of a hard time coming up with a yes, no answer. Tell the fans at home that great Ricky Anderson story. As you see, Jordan Walden come on for the eight. Well, Ricky, Ricky had so many classic lines, but I believe the one you're talking about is John Olerud. Yes. We saw John Olerud. I might have been at first base, and he had this helmet on, which John Olerud always did. He didn't have a regular hat. He had the, the no flap hard helmet. I said, I played with a guy just like that. <laughs> yeah, that was me. John Holbert. Line back to the mound. Walden spared that shot from John Jaso, who pinch hit. That'll get your attention, won't it? Wow. He charged that one. You can especially, literally say that from him. Yeah, especially when you think about where he lets go of the ball. He's even that much closer. Oh, my. Wow. I mean, do you see that ball? Man, that gives you. <laughs> he, he walked around the mound just to get that holy cow feeling out of his. That, that's that's impressive. Either the ball found the glove, or he's got some really really good reflexes. Brave staff has retired 12 straight Oakland hitters. Coco Crisp is now behind 0 and 2. This was the point you guys were talking about earlier. You get a good start and get a lead. Braves bullpen has the ability to shut other teams down. That's what Carpenter did. That's what Walden's trying to do after Alex Wood went six innings of two run ball tonight. Kept this guy off base and in the first inning it was. Very important as it turned out as Alex walked a couple of guys gave up the base hit. And the thing that saved Alex in the first was the pickoff at second. And Abad is up. In the Oakland pen. Uh, and you mentioned Joe the key to. Getting through this lineup was starting right here with this guy. Keeping them off the bases. Well, he's he's in an extended slump and he's not the only Oakland a who can say that in the last 11 games crisp five hits and 38 at bats. He'll be all for four if Gosselin or Johnson can catch this. And there's the second out. Wasn't it Chris? Was it last year leading off against the Tigers and Verlander and he hit a home run first at bat, maybe the first pitch right down the right field line? Almost like we're sending you a message right here. Didn't turn out so well. Well, they, by all accounts, should have beaten the Tigers in that series. They had the lead, I think, in every game, but. Yeah, you're going to see tomorrow night pitched an incredible game against Justin Verlander. Sonny Gray in his first real time in the big leagues. Yeah, I'm anxious to see him. I know he's not a great big guy. No, he's a little guy, gives you everything he has straight over the top fastball, real good curveball. He's a two pitch pitcher working on the third. But his fastball curveball combination is pretty, pretty good. Sonny Gray, a first round pick by Oakland in 2011. Out of Andy. He's a Tennessee boy. Johnny Gomes, one of those guys, rare guys these days, that stands in the front of the batter's box, way up in the front. That, that's the definition of a 50 foot curveball or whatever that. Uh, I think if you swing at that, you know you're not picking the ball up. You, you've probably committed early. <laughs> two balls, two strikes. And fouled straight back. Still love Gomes. First time I started watching him play, I couldn't help but think of the way he works his helmet over. 
I equated him to a bull rider adjusting his hat in the shoot before he said, let's let's go. Check him out. He'll work it over. <laughs> yeah, 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 I think I got it now. And now a full count. He's already walked twice tonight. Be nice to have that guy lead off next inning. Doesn't matter where Johnny plays, what team, he can't get a helmet that fits. <laughs> <laughs> Popped him up. Will it stay in play for Gaddis? He doesn't even remove the mask. And Gomes pops out. 14 straight A's have been set down by the Brave staff tonight. All Atlanta, 7 to your score, home eighth. It was a fun second inning as the Braves claimed the lead. Justin Upton with a leadoff home run in the second inning. Two batters later, Evan Gaddis would do it again. That was his first home run since July 27th. The long ball continued. Freddie Freeman in the third inning was able to push one out of here. That was a three-run shot against Jason Hamill. He wouldn't last much longer than Phil Gosselin, his first career home run. For the second consecutive Friday night, the Braves have hit four home runs, including the first ever Major League home run for a rookie. Last Friday was Tommy LaStella. Tonight, Phil Gosselin and the Braves have put a touchdown on the board tonight against the A's. Kind of fun, isn't it, Tom? See those guys breaking it out again, and especially for a guy like Gosselin. That's wonderful. I'm very glad to see Justin back in the lineup tonight. So we head to the home eighth. Bottom part of the order coming up. Fernando Abad is the new Oakland pitcher. Yeah, he's a left-hander with knuckle curveballs. Big sweeper action. Fastball not too shabby, 94. Falls off the mound a little bit. Change up at 74 miles an hour. But he likes this curveball. Lestella, BJ Upton, and then we'll see for the Braves. We've scored seven runs on seven hits. Four of those seven hits left the ballpark. I have to add this guy to the uh, all pitcher, not the all not so good pitcher name. Popped up. Donaldson in foul ground is going to have room on the warning track by the Oakland dugout. And there's out number one. Our friends at Delta Airlines are proud sponsors of the Atlanta Braves. And our pal Mac Honey's watching the game tonight. Mac celebrated his 87th birthday yesterday. Uh, Hard working old timer. That's good. I saw him at the Hall of Fame ceremonies. He just couldn't 
stop talking about how great you guys treat him. You know, really, you and Joe, yeah, just appreciates everything you throw his way. He's gotten a lot of endorsements out of this. He's rolling the pierogies for the trip to Pittsburgh as we speak. As BJ Upton looks at a ball outside, a couple of strikeouts and a walk for the Braves center fielder. People often ask how we're lucky, Chip and I are lucky enough to get those special dinners on the charter. Yeah. yeah. Chateau Brion. <laughs> Very nice. Been a real nice. Yeah, I just tell everybody it's a lucky seat. Well, the all bad name pitchers, so I'm gonna have to add this guy to it. You know, you got He Grant, wasn't on there already? No, I, I just I didn't I didn't even you know, you got Grant Balfour, Homer Bailey, Bob Walk, just things you don't want to be associated with. But he would have to be on there. A shot past Donaldson who almost flipped over after he dove for that ball. And he's wondering how in the world he got by him. B.J. Upton with a one out hit. Well, Hop thing, right over the glove. Yeah, came up on him. By the way, the pitching coach on that team is uh, Rich Doobie. <laughs> I guess it is. <laughs> Romero Pena will grab a bat. He'll hit for Walden. Rich is now in the Braves organization. Glad to have him. Of this game, the offense. We were calling for it at the start of the broadcast. Could the Braves bats support Alex Wood tonight? They've done that. Eight hits, four homers. Third time this year the Braves have had a four homer game. May 25th against the Rockies and then August 8th against Washington. It was the first game of the homestand against Steven Strasburg. Rest of the Washingtonians. 0 2 pitch. And Pena didn't get it. He is struck out. And there's the second out of the inning. The Braves have done tonight, though, guys, what they didn't do against the Dodgers. And with all due respect to Jason Hamill, who's a nine game winner this year, you know, you knew that coming up with uh, Sonny Gray and John Lester, the uh, next two nights are going to be awfully tough. And you better win tonight to make sure you're in good shape coming up against the next two guys. What they didn't do against the Dodgers when they were eight, when they avoided seeing Kershaw and Grinky and couldn't do anything. It yeah, wasn't that funny. They they beat Ryu, but they lost to Heron, Correa, and Correa. So it, it's a good sign tonight. That they've taken care of business when you would hope they would. And I don't mean that as any slight at all to Hamill, but his numbers don't match up to those of the guys the next two nights. Two balls, no strikes for Jason Hayward. Pretty pitch. Washington in the ninth leads 5 3. Pirates have the tying run at the plate. Rafael Soriano is on to try to save it for Washington. Braves 
If they win tonight, gain ground on one of those two teams. Two balls and a strike. And Jason pops it up, center of the diamond. Norris is there and puts the squeeze on that, and we are headed to the night. 7 2 Atlanta over Oakland. We're in game one of the series. Lap or the one with the lap. Braves fans are having more fun than Oakland tonight. 7 2 as we head to inning number nine. As we promised you earlier tonight, we have our ATT fan photo of the game. Tweet your photo to hashtag South Fan Photo for a chance to be shown in an upcoming game broadcast. It's brought to you by ATT. I'll bet that was right before they got zombied up. There you go. Good picture. So a big lead chance for James Russell to do some good work. He'll have to navigate through the three four and five hitters for the athletics. Most of that work of course came while with the Cubs. Russell. Has given up three runs in his last five outings. Two runs in an inning on this homestand. He'll face Josh Donaldson, the Oakland third baseman, who's 0 for 2. It's a little odd with Russell. Historically, he's gotten lefties out better than righties. That's not the case, John, this year for whatever reason. Yeah, those things are hard to. To track, and you might just say, okay, maybe it's just a one year oddity. Did you ever have stretches? No, I say seasons where you said, you'd say to yourself, well, I don't remember this being this hard last year. This came a lot easier than it is right now. And it might be your bread and butter slider or yeah. something else. Well, it, I went through stretches where left handers just wore me out and it didn't matter what I tried. And I certainly tried many different change ups. But until I came up with the split, it was a whole new different game. I mean, that was a game changer for me. It took me to the next level. And, and where was that in your career? That was probably I would say just before the Cy Young year probably 96 where I was able to perfect it and obviously it paid off because I had a really good year but that became the weapon you know they they just stack left handers against me and then it became full circle where lefties you almost some got times he wouldn't pinch hit a lefty because of the split so fortunately for me the one thing that I never lost feel for was my slider and that that kept me always within reach of having a good game. 
Speaking of good games, Gosselin's had one with the bat and with the glove. But you go through periods of time where you lose your feel for pitches. You know, Tommy, I hear Tommy talk about it a lot. And just you know, get out of out of sorts a little bit. And you, you don't, you're not connected with the way it feels when it comes out off your fingers. So, who taught you your split? You know, uh, Nardi Contreras. Um, it was a fosh back in, and basically, the way I, I, I did. I probably threw it different than most, but best way to explain it is I could put my fingers on top of the sweet spot the two seams running long ways deep center playable for BJ Derek Norris will be the 16th straight athletic retired tonight and I would turn the ball up my fingers turn the ball where it would sit on my fingers upside down and then I would turn it back over and that's the pressure I would have to hold it I didn't dig I didn't do it. I just set it right outside outside the the, the seams and the pressure was in between my knuckles and it just naturally worked because I threw it like a fastball and it hmm. came out and the bottom would drop out when it was thrown correct. Nate Fryman is the Oakland hitter. You know and ironically that's what gave me leverage going to the bullpen. Nobody wanted to get to two strikes because of the split and the slider so I got a lot of quick outs and I could pitch more often that way. Things are cooking in Washington by the way 5 4 now Pirates trail the Nationals. They've got men at the corners with two out. Base is empty here in Atlanta. Russell versus Freeman and the Braves are a strike away now. I think Freddy Gonzalez has hit on something here with Russell and that's bringing him into a clean inning. On my way to cutting my hair. Be the shortest haircut in baseball history. <laughs> two balls, two strikes. <laughs> got to start somewhere. You got to rally the troops somehow, some way. Glavs reached that Hall of Fame status. He didn't, you know, he's in another world now. Uh, swing and a miss, and there's your ball game. This one was fun tonight. A crisp, clean, well pitched, well played, clutch hitting night for Atlanta. The Braves hit four homers. They make a winner of Alex Wood. And Atlanta takes game one of the weekend set against the high flying A's final 7 to Atlanta.